You know, uh, further investigation, of course, will be presumably required checking these numbers. Now, your tech partner in this is Amnesty. You've also uh, taken certain numbers, taken it to the University of Toronto, to the lab there. Uh, I want to, uh, you know, the government's other view is that this is a foreign conspiracy. I don't know whether you heard our BJP spokesperson saying that, you know, that this is being, this is part of a foreign conspiracy. There are those who are saying amnesty has an agenda against India. Human rights groups have an agenda against the Modi government. This is a conspiracy against Mr. Modi. Uh, amnesty forced out of the country. It's targeting the government. Uh, do you want to respond to that, this whole thing, that this is a foreign conspiracy? Well, I can say that amnesty has no agenda with that. And we, we do work with Amnesty as a, tech, as a tech partner of this project. This project is an investigative journalism. It's, it's about journalism. It's about investigation. And at Forbidden Stories, we are journalists. And so what we are worried about is to find some evidence. And what we find is it's evidence. So there is no anti-India feeling. There is no anti-India conspiracy. It's just journalism. And, and, and presumably the evidence that will conclusively prove that there was hacking is the entry or the presence of Pegasus software in these specific numbers if the mobile numbers are put through forensic analysis. Am I correct, Laurent? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And this is public. You can find the, 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 the security lab report. Uh, this have been pu published and you can also find the two that uh, Amnesty is using, it's already an open, so an open, open data now. Uh, if the Indian government, though, Laurent, was to ask you tomorrow, can you provide us all whatever documents you have? Would you make whatever you have available to the government or a court-monitored inquiry in India on this phone hacking? No, we, what we are making available is a story for the public opinion. And that's what we did, and we did that for the general interest. Uh, and so that's uh, what we what we need is answers now. Uh, the, what we are asking is question to Indian governments, and I think that this is uh, the next step: is uh, getting some answers mm. from authorities, not only in India but in other countries, to have clarification for the for the sake of the public interest. Do you believe, though, that the only way in which we will know the exact extent of this is to order a probe? France uh, has ordered a probe. Do you believe that at the end of the day, India, uh, only in the absence of documentary evidence at this moment, all you need a proper judicial probe? Do you agree with that? I think, yeah, it's really up to the citizens, up to the victims to decide what they want to do after that. Do they want to uh, file a complaint against a country against the company really uh, up to the justice to do his work now. You know, it's interesting. Uh, NSO, Israeli company, allegedly close to Benjamin Netanyahu. Many of the countries listed here are countries with which Israel had strong ties. What is the larger issue? Do you believe that it is the manner in which governments are using technology and surveillance to pry on citizens without their knowledge, thereby perhaps destroying their right to privacy? We saw that in the Jamal Khashoggi case where the Saudi national was tracked by the government, killed eventually. Do you believe that's the biggest fear, that there is the big state out there which is prying on people's lives using technology, which is the real danger? Yes, that's, that's a big danger for all of us. That's a big danger for democracy. That's a big danger for journalists, human rights defenders. And every people, we can represent a kind of a danger for the power. And so if there is no regulation, if there is no conversation about, OK, what can we do to protect citizens, that would be a problem for the next years. And, and, and this is a global threat against democracy. That kind of cyber attack is, in, in, is invisible. It's hard to get some evidence. And it's, uh, it's a very dangerous tool to, against democracy. My final word question then, you know, you've tracked 45 countries, India, more than 300 cases being found here. Is that something that surprised you, the scale of this operation, possible operation in India, where numbers of journalists, human rights activists, politicians all coming out? I mean, compared to the other countries, we saw ourselves as a democracy, you know, and now we realize that within the democracy, there is a sort of deep state out there, which perhaps is tracking people. Are you surprised at the number of uh, num numbers in your list from India? Yes, I was surprised. Um, we, we knew that uh, uh, Citizen Lab uh, report and on 
uh, on the WhatsApp case that there were some Indian targets already. So that's not a surprise that Pegasus is used against uh, Indian people. What is surprising in the scale, what is surprising is how this tool has been used against different parts of, uh, um, of uh, people who, uh, who can represent a danger for the poor in India. Let's leave it there, Loro. Uh, thanks very much for joining us. I'm told many more names are coming out in the days ahead. So we look forward to, to finding out more and hopefully that this investigation will be taken to its logical conclusion. Loro, Richard of Forbidden Stories, appreciate your joining me here on the news today.